Welcome back again. In the previous part, we cleaned up loads of corrosion from a leaked battery, then figured out display and keyboard problems, watch it if you haven't. There's a new problem though, let me show you. Note that I haven't done any work between filming and let me just boot the ThinkPad up. It boots up fine, but the screen is all pink. Not only pink though, as it sometimes switches colors, glitches out, all that great and totally expected stuff. Yeah. But what I wanted to do first was do a full test from the BIOS and see if there are any additional problems we should be worried about. So let's do that. The date setting screen is pretty nagging, but I'm still working on a replacement, so bear with me. To enter the BIOS on these vintage ThinkPads, all you have to do is press and hold F1 and then flick the power switch. It's real simple. Et voila! We're in easy setup. You navigate the DAC to the Test tab, click it, wait for the little ambulance to arrive, and we are in the test section. Just press the start button and the tests will begin. Now it's going to take some time, but for your viewing pleasure, here it is. Enjoy! The tests are done, hope you like the graphical qualities of it. There's a new error that came up on the system board of all places. System board, big deal huh? Well, no, here's what's going on. The way the error codes work, as described in the hardware maintenance manual, are that you look at the 4-digit FRU code. FRU stands for Field Replaceable Unit and the numbers stand for two suspected devices. You should replace the FRU indicated by the two numbers to the left first and if that doesn't work, the two numbers to the right. So, in this case, the devices the test suspects to have failed are 17 for the front IR and 10 for the system board and then 20 for memory card and 10 again for the system board. As you've seen before, the ribbon cable for the front IR was eaten by the corrosion pretty bad, so honestly those errors aren't that big of a deal and it's not like I'm gonna use two infrared ports in the year 2020. And the memory is the memory, works but only reports half of usable RAM. The BIOS itself contains different things, such as keyboard stuff, trackpoint stuff, serial devices, passwords, boot devices, all that. I wish more computers had these sorts of menus, but I digress. What I really want to do now is this. The ThinkPad is begging us for a floppy disk, so let's give it one. I have a Windows 95 boot disk on this one. And I also have a hard drive with fresh Windows 95 that comes from another ThinkPad with a hefty size of 2.1 GB. But for now I'm going to pop in the floppy. As I inserted the floppy I realized that I didn't put a floppy drive in, so great job. That was a really dumb mistake, but thankfully it's a matter of seconds due to the hot swappable nature of this floppy drive. Just plop it in and you're good to go. So 
With mistakes corrected, I reinserted the floppy and promptly rejoiced in the happy noises of data being read. The ThinkPad is back in business. Messing around with the command prompt revealed that some of the keys don't work. That's strange and I didn't expect it at all. Luckily, IBM has got our back. In the easy setup, or the BIOS if you will, pressing Ctrl and A gives us an advanced menu, and then Ctrl and K brings up a built-in keyboard test. Let's test our keys then. Immediately, I see what I feared the most. Several unresponsive keys. Maybe it's those pesky ribbon cables that go to the keyboard that are bent somewhere or something. We need to find out. So, this ThinkPad is obviously cursed. One thing is fixed, another thing breaks. It's lots of fun with this one. Let's take the keyboard off and we can shove that laptop looking paperweight to the side for now. This is the keyboard, technically it's a keyboard card, but whatever, and it has no screws at all. Let's go ahead and remove a key, maybe this will give us a clue. One key is off, but it gave us no clue at all. Maybe removing all the keys will. This keyboard is impressively clean for being 25 years old. Just some specks of dust is all. and I might have an idea as to how to open it up. Yeah, so these tiny latches get me interested, so I tried to pull the bezel to the left and BAM! All the little switches rocketed out of it. The latches just slide out, though I had to use a lot of force. Yeah, I can bet that these will get lost, so I'd better store them somewhere safe. As for the guts of the keyboard, they are a bit unusual. You'd be inclined to say that this is a standard membrane keyboard and you'd be right, though it has some differences. No direct switch to membrane contact, this black rubber layer, and the mouse buttons seem not to be on a separate PCB. The track point is easily removable, so at least there's that, but we'll have to unsandwich this thing and see how it works. We have two membranes, separated by a spacer sheet. On top of all that is a rubber sheet, presumably as to soften the keystrokes, switch caps nestled in the keyboard bezel, and the keys which fit into them. The rubber sheet led me to believe that this was a foam and foil keyboard, but it's just a standard run-of-the-mill membrane keyboard. My guess is that there's a damaged connection or dirt that causes some keys not to register. And upon closer inspection, it is the former that is the problem. There's a lot of dull traces. You can easily make out which traces are good and which aren't. They must have been affected either by the battery leak or oxidation over time. After all, this ThinkPad is 25 years old. Repairing membrane keyboards is a tricky business, just ask the many ZX Spectrum owners. 
I'm going to clean the pads and the traces and we will see if that did the trick. Still on high hopes from all the problems that I faced with this ThinkPad, I eagerly awaited success with this simple keyboard issue. The success did not arrive. It saddens me to say that it's pretty much game over because of this dumb keyboard. It doesn't work fully and neither do the mouse buttons, so I would need to have it set up with an external keyboard and a mouse. And I can't plug in both either way because there's only one PS2 port on the laptop. I would need a docking station and even then, what's the point of having a laptop that's docked and uses external peripherals? You could as well just have a PC. I have since looked at the membranes again, but with a multimeter. Traces I could fix with solder or copper tape, but the pads aren't that easy to restore, due to the nature of the design. But if I were to fix it with something like conductive paste, well, the cost is nearly as much as I paid for the whole laptop. This makes this foray not worth it, frankly. Not really worth it. To me, regretfully, this project is pretty much done. At least done until I manage to snag a working replacement keyboard. Which isn't going to be easy considering this ThinkPad is nearly a quarter of a century old and shipping parts in from the States is also very costly. I even bought a cherry on top for the restoration in the form of a unused, new old stack original track point from the late 90s. I was going to add it as a finishing touch of the whole restoration, but seeing as it didn't quite go as planned, well, let's just say I'm not gonna use it. But despite that, just for peace of mind, the least I could do is clean the exterior of some 20 plus years of grime and greasy fingertips and then it can happily lay in storage. I use plain washing up liquid diluted in water, one without ammonia so as not to ruin the rubbery surface of the ThinkPad. Suffice to say, it wasn't all that dirty, but it still needed some cleaning. And with all the parts clean, let's do one last assembly time-lapse.
And thus, the saga of the 25-year-old ThinkPad 755CX is over. Almost. To be frank, it sucks that I didn't manage to get it working. Kinda anticlimactic, don't you think? I had more videos planned on this thing, such as a review, some additional bits, exploring the quirks and features of this laptop, but this will sadly have to wait. I'm just as disappointed as you are. But as I cobbled this thing together for the last time, I figured that I at least wanted to play the legendary retro PC anthem, Passport.mid. Considering that only the keyboard is shot, it seems doable. It's the least this ThinkPad could give me in exchange for all this work. Instead, it gave me a middle finger. Memory error, the same we had in the beginning. And to quote myself from the first part, and the laptop will not boot because it's a fatal error. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing is cursed.